Each year we welcome thousands of nonprofits to the Nonprofit Technology Conference. This year, the 12 NTC will be held in San Francisco on April 3rd through the 5th. Learn more at n10.org forward slash NTC. I'm here with Frank Ferry of BlackBod. Hey guys. Frank, uh, the famous uh, dad of triplets. <laughs> oh my god. Um, have a picture. I know, I know, exactly. So, um, there's this little, you know, survey report thing that we might have heard about. Hopefully. Why don't you tell us about it? Hopefully. Um, do you want me to hold this? or? Uh, okay. Yeah, so we just released with uh, N10 and Common Knowledge, uh, you know, BlackBot released the, uh, what do we call it, the Nonprofit Social Networking Benchmark Report. Um, it's actually the fourth annual one that's come out. So, uh, you know, it's very, it's interesting stuff. You know, it's, it's basically data um, based on a survey of about 3,500 plus nonprofit, um, you know, practitioners that filled out the survey to let us know what's going on with their social networking activity. So they gave us information on, you know, if they're using Facebook or Twitter or, you know, which social networks they're using. Uh, they gave us data on how many fans or followers they have on all the social networks, um, if they're, you know, staffing their social networks with actual people or they're paying any money, if they're applying any budget to their social networking activity. Um, and even this year, what's new to the report is we kind of asked them to give us some information on the value of their social network. So, you know, what's the cost of a Facebook fan versus the value of a Facebook fan? So we started to try to get some data um, from nonprofits to start helping them figure out, like, well, what's the average value of a Facebook like, just like they know, you know, what's the average value of an email subscriber. So, um, very interesting data. Uh, and it was that part of the report was self reported. So it was nonprofits essentially just telling us. So there's no real statistical analysis going on. It's just us trying to get a good idea to start the conversation about what's real ROI and things like that. So uh, it's very interesting. I mean, you can go download the report. I think it's, I know you can go to bit.ly, bit.ly slash NP social and you can get to the report somehow if you hit that link. Yeah, I also saw it's on the Huffington Post yesterday. Yeah. So Huff you can Google HuffPo. And it got on yeah. Social Bright. Social Bright um, blogged about it this morning. Fingers yeah, crossed Mashable will pick it up. You know, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> so obviously it's a benchmarking report. Yes. And I'm pretty sure I can authoritatively say that all of the arrows go up. To the right. Yeah. yeah. Generally, yes. <laughs> there's one that there's maybe one or two that didn't in terms of growth, but so the, actually, so that's my question. What were there any surprises? Yeah, LinkedIn didn't go up. Like LinkedIn went actually went down a little bit. Um, I don't have any good insight into why that happened. Um, and then you have folks like Pinterest. You know that we didn't get data on how many are using it, but it was we asked like, what else are you paying attention to? And there was a large number that said Pinterest. So. Pinterest is kind of up and coming, LinkedIn maybe a little flat to down, and um, what else is in there? So uh, did anybody, uh, in terms of other things, um, did anybody mention sites like Instagram or other mobile related sites? Like not anything, anything like significant, no. Pinterest was definitely the only other one that was really mentioned with any s significance, you know. Uh, there might have been a few outliers, maybe a few people here and there, but Pinterest had enough to say, Oh, nonprofits are actually thinking about this and trying it and seeing what's going on. Yeah, there's. I would say there's definitely a big presence of of nonprofits on Pinterest who are just checking it out and yeah. trying to figure out how it works. And it it makes sense. It's visual. You know, it, it, nonprofits have a t story to tell, so that right. totally makes sense. Like we know the Humane Society. She yes. Carrie yeah. loves Pinterest. Exactly. Which know, we're gonna ask her about if she shows up any minute. Yeah. Carrie's <laughs> supposed to be here, so if you see her, <laughs> tell her that she should be right here. <laughs> but that's okay. So. Um, um, I'm curious though because Pinterest, although it has a mobile version, yeah. is not really a mobile app. Right. Um, and the others are obviously also all have mobile versions, but mobile's just generally kind of a hot topic. Did that yeah. come up? Were there questions directly asking about mobile in the survey? We did in the not. Report? We did not get deep into any like mobile or international or any of that kind of stuff. Um, it's come up in conversation about doing the survey. So like for next year, you know, we think that, yeah, mobile is, it's obviously a growing thing. It's, it's pretty dominant, you know, nowadays, especially if you were in the for-profit world, right? You'd be, this is being talked about for sure. 
So, um, not in this year's report, but it's definitely being talked about in terms of including some stuff like that for next year's report. Yeah, I think it would be interesting just because obviously Facebook and Twitter, all the obvious, even LinkedIn too, they're yeah. all mobile, very, very mobile friendly, right, and there's right. a lot of traffic from Everybody's mobile. Everybody's on so. their phone here tweeting, right? I mean, that's just what happens. Right, so. right, exactly. So, what about things like uh, white label social networks or private social networks? Um, was there any any uh, questions about that yeah, or yeah, activity on that? Um, and I don't have I don't remember all the questions offhand, but there there was a set of questions that were about you know commercial social networks, so Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn, and then there was another set of questions on um, what we call house social networks. So you know you're maybe I don't know the American Lung Association, and you want to have a social network that's for your community. It's not public; it's a private thing because people are sharing information that they feel more, you know, secure sharing in kind of a controlled group. So, so yeah, there was questions about that and um, you know, in general the numbers stayed the same in terms of like how many, like how many organizations are doing private social networking. I see her. Um, <laughs> Carrie. <laughs> she's late. She's late. Everybody, she's late. Come on. So to answer the question and we can talk more about it, but yes, there was questions about how social networks um, and it seems like they're staying fairly similar in terms of like how many are doing it, but the numbers in their communities are growing. So their house social networks are getting bigger, but there's not a lot of new organizations doing that type of social networking. All right, awesome, Welcome. interesting. So, Welcome. Sorry. She is the trailblazer, by the way. Yes, congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah, hi everybody. I'm Carrie Lewis. I am the director of emerging media with the Humane Society of the United States. Uh, and I focus on mobile and social media strategy. Cool. So we, we were just obviously talking about the, the benchmarking report, and uh, Frank was just giving us some basic information about it, um, what was in the report. Yeah. Um, and we were kind of touching on, on different, different sites from the obvious social media sites. So we wanted to ask you specifically about Pinterest, <laughs> because we know that you have... In every single presentation I've done today, so. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, the thing about Pinterest is that you've got it's got to match, match your demographic, right? And then you've got to find if there's a way you can make it work that works towards your goals. Yeah. So our goals, you know, advocacy, fundraising, online sales. We have an online store, um, and of course that stuff. Immediately we were like, we've got to get the pin it button on all of those products. And I was joking around, but it's true. We have this shirt called Real Men Have Cats, and that is a top pinned item on our and from our website. Do you want one? No, I don't. Oh, okay. Um, yes, um, and. That's because it's a unique product and, you know, people really love that stuff. So the great thing about Pinterest is you can go and see what people are pinning from your site. Um, so, you know, being on Pinterest is twofold. It's actually having boards and having an account and providing value to that community, but also making your content pinnable because we're shocked to see what people actually pin. Yeah. People pin our advocacy alerts for our SEALs campaign this year. You would never think that, but it's got a great photo of a SEAL. And um, and it does really well. It's all about the photos, and we so with the report that we're all talking about, like we got an infographic created because people will pin it, right? That's really? that's the point of. So I think just there's a trend online where people want to uh, like visual things, and like Pinterest is all about visual items, right? So you and know. Social networks are starting to become more visual, and you can see that from the I'll popularity. Pass <laughs> you can see that from the popularity of Timeline. Timeline puts yeah. a really big focus on photos now, and when you highlight something, it blows the whole photo up, you know? And Pinterest is the fastest growing website of all time because it's so visual. And so, you know, as nonprofit marketers, we've got to start thinking um, of optimizing that, making sure that our content has a really great image. Yeah. The same with Facebook sharing. Yeah. So. So since you mentioned Facebook, let's talk about Facebook. Let's do it. Uh, what do you think has been the impact of all of these recent Facebook changes, like the timeline? Should I start? Yeah, go, go for it. That's a good question. I, what do you think has been the impact? I mean, I mean, has it been hard? Do they, nonprofits are finding it hard to figure out what to do. With any it? change is hard. Any yeah, change, right? yeah, any change is hard. But I, I don't know. I, I guess I look at it like. It's changed, but it's not that crazy. I mean, the fundamental things about Facebook are still the same, right? It's still, you have fans and followers who are, you know, affiliated with your organization somehow, right? They like you for a reason. 
And yeah, it's changed, but the, the fundamental reason for being there is still the same, you know? So people like my page, and so now I need to interact with them. I need to provide good content. It's probably becoming more visual because of the ways that you can use timeline. Um, it's kind of cool because you can kind of put your history, right? So the history of your nonprofit, like We've all the way so back. Much fun with that. Yeah, like you can go all the way back to when you started, right? And then you can imagine if you could take your whole timeline, if you really filled it all out, and then turn it into like an animated video, yeah. or it is a big infographic. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like so, yeah, I, I think it's actually really cool. And if anything, it, you know, one of the benefits of change is it makes people think more about what they're doing there. Like they may not like it because <laughs> it's hard and you got to figure new things out. And you know, I think taking away the whole um, you know like my page to see my content kind of concept like that that has an impact for regular you know businesses as well as nonprofits. So people got to get more strategic about how to use it. But I still think the core principles like engage with your audience, give them good content, you know, be a good person while you're out there, and have fun with people still all apply. So I mean, do you want to? Yeah, I just have a follow-up question then, because you mentioned um, that you asked everybody for the value of a yeah, Facebook oh yeah, fan. Right. So did you help them? I mean, was there like a formula that you gave people to no. figure that out, or was it kind it of open-ended? Did it was you just want to see? So, it, so we asked people in the report, you know, how do you value a Facebook fan or a like? And it was it was open-ended. It was all self-reported. There was no there was no suggested numbers, nothing like that. So it literally was just tell us what you think the value is. So, um, and I think, I don't have the exact number, it was like $218, um, is that right? 218 or something right around there. Look at the report to make sure I'm saying that right. But it was pretty high, right? So um, it's an interesting number to debate and to start actually thinking about. I mean, I think that was the point was start thinking about value, start thinking about ROI in terms of real value of things, and hopefully it'll do it this year. Yeah, so. and for, for you, like, because you obviously work for an organization as a social media strategist, you know, you probably have to think about these kinds of, of numbers, the ROI factor. Absolutely, so. Absolutely. I mean, what do you think we, about the number? it's too high, Frank, <laughs> but, but Did it's... Did you respond to the survey? Yes, of course, okay. yeah. yeah. No, but, um... <laughs> You know, but the thing is, it's self-reported. Yeah. So there's yeah, whatever. But um, but yeah, as as a, a strategist, like Facebook timeline, along with any Facebook change, is like. Ugh. But you just have to suck it up and roll with it because you have no choice. We are using a platform that is free, and we b have built this audience that you know wants to hear from us. And so, you know, the thing is, is choosing a really great covered photo. Ours is a bunch of puppies that we rescued in this puppy mill. It's the most adorable photo ever. Yeah, I know, I know. It's the puppy kit kitten factor, but you know, but um, but also filling out those milestones is really great. Uh, a friend of mine was showing us the the Spotify uh, Facebook timeline. It goes back all the way to the 1400s nice. because that's when famous composers were born. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, just get really creative with it. We dug up all these old photos of our CEO and was like when he became president and right. things and like he's a well-known figure and so people enjoy seeing that kind of history. You so have a baby photo up there? Of me? No, no. Of of <laughs> no, but it's a really good idea. That's awesome. I know. It's a good idea. All right, kids. We are totally out of time. I want to. I could talk. I could talk social media strategy forever, and yeah. I didn't get a chance to ask you about Google Plus. Damn. Anyway, so next we're on to the next session. So we'll see you on the flip side.